In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. You will notice these days that a lot of the readings are going to revolve around baptism because we recently celebrated a great feast in the church, and that's the Feast of Theophany, which is the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ at the hands of John the Baptist in the Jordan River. So you'll hear also next week another gospel uh, about the born blind man. Yesterday's Vespers gospel was about the palsied man who was made whole by the sanctified water when the angel of the Lord is supposed to stir every year. And a Christ our Lord came and he brought wellness and wholeness to the palsied man. There's so much to be said about St. John the Baptist as a servant um, because he held so many titles. His greatness is really unmatched, if you think about it, because, you know, he was a priest and the son of a priest, and he was a saint, and he was a martyr, and he was a baptizer, and um, he was a great preacher to the point where he brought people to salvation. Uh, but the beauty of John the Baptist is that he didn't let it get the best of him. He didn't get carried away and think that he's a great man. And we saw it in everything he said and, and, and his mannerisms as well. It's important for us to know that all of our actions and our deeds should be for the purpose of glorifying God, not glorifying ourselves. I can pass an exam. I can be promoted at work. I can find the right spouse for marriage. I can finally have children by God's grace. A lot of times I give credit to myself for these accomplishments or milestones rather than turning my eyes upward and attributing the glory to God. Many times we seek praise from the people around us. And I want to read to you what St. Paul writes. He says, Do I seek to please men? For if I, if I still pleased men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. Now look at that. If I wish to please the people, then I cannot call myself a servant of God. So I have to choose one. Do I wish to please God, or do I wish to draw the attention of the people? It says in the scripture, they loved the praise of men more than the praise from God. I hope that we don't fall into that category. In today's gospel, the disciples of John were saying to him, um, that Christ is baptizing. And at one point, John had said to them, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He even said, he who comes after me is preferred before me. When was the last time you said that to somebody? He who comes after me is preferred before me. Who is it that comes after you? Maybe your little brother or your little sister? Or maybe if you're in school, the cohort that came after you, the graduates that came after you, do you celebrate their achievements or do you try to put them down and say they are not equal to what I've accomplished in my generation? He who comes after me is preferred before me. Despite his greatness, St. John the Baptist humbled himself really to nothing. And he, he referred to Christ and he said, I'm unworthy to untie even his sandals. He went on to say that he who has the bride is the bridegroom. He's referring to Christ as the bridegroom. Well, who is the bride of Christ? Was Christ married? Who is the bride of Christ? Christ, he came to marry the church. We are the bride of Christ. So he who has the bride is the bridegroom. And then he went on to say, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. So I don't know if you've ever been in that position where your brother or your best friend was getting married and you are the friend of the bridegroom. How happy are you? How much joy fills your heart for your brother or your best friend? It should be extreme joy for him. That's the way things operate. It's his big day, and you are right beside him. Today, unfortunately, many times the devil tries to attack us to plant the sin of jealousy in our heart and the sin of false joy. 
so that we can appear happy on the outside, but internally we're struggling, we're bleeding, we're fuming, but on the outside you can't tell. And we can even take it a step further and say, some of us rejoice in the misfortunes of others so that we can be glorified in a better light. So when something bad happens to somebody, I look better, my image is improved in comparison to other people. But John the Baptist was not like that, though he deserved all the glory. Um, even when he was in prison, he didn't pity himself, but he deferred his disciples over to Jesus Christ our Savior. A small commentary by Blessed Augustine on just that one verse where John the Baptist said, he must increase and I must decrease. But how can Christ increase? Because if Christ were to increase, then he wouldn't be perfect. Christ is the son of the living God. He is perfect and sinless. So how can he increase? And if he decreases for whatever reason, then he can't call himself God. So it's kind of a conundrum, a little bit of a dilemma. How can he increase and how can he decrease? It's not possible. Christ and John the Baptist were about the same age, about 30 years old. And you know that after the age of 30, there's no more increasing. In fact, in the 30s and 40s and 50s, it's, it's a decline. It goes downhill from there. So there's no increasing. Then what is this mystery all about? What are we referring to here? Well, before Jesus Christ, men were glorifying themselves in every rank and position and possession and endeavor. People were glorifying themselves. Christ came as a man to lessen the glory of man and to increase the glory of God. To lessen the glory of man and increase the glory of God. He came without sin. He found all men in sin. And he came to put away sin. Shall I say that again? Again. He came without sin and found all men in sin. And he came to put away sin by conquering sin on the cross. So God may freely give and men may confess their sins and receive. Man's confession reminds him of his lowliness, his humility, that he stands at the foot of the cross, at the foot of Christ, not at the apex of anybody or anything. He must increase, but I must decrease. He must give or be the giver, and I must be what? the receiver. He must be the giver and I must be the receiver. He must be glorified. I must confess my lowliness. So John the Baptist was lessened by the glory of our Savior Jesus Christ, but Christ was exalted when he was crucified on the cross. John was lessened. Christ was exalted. Blessed Augustine also makes one other point, which is kind of interesting. He said, even at the time that Jesus Christ was born, which by the way, really nobody knows when Christ was born, but we celebrate Christmas around, let's say, it was agreed in the fourth century to celebrate Christmas on December 25th, which corresponds to our 29th of Kiak in our Coptic calendar. So Christ was born around the time where the days begin to increase. December 21st is called what? The winter solstice. After that, the, the, the days begin to lengthen, right? And when was John born? Well, John was born six months prior. So John was born around, let's say, around June 25th, let's say. And you know that June 21st is the summer solstice, right? Around that time? June 21st, that's when they, the days begin to do what? After the 21st, they begin to lessen. So that's just a kind of a meditation that Blessed Augustine had. He said, so even in their births, it testifies to the words of John the Baptist. So 
I pray that the glory of God increases in us and that our own glory begins to dissipate so that ours may be increased but in God. He that glories, let him glory in God. He that glories, let him glory in God. If we glory in ourselves, we will grow, we will be puffed up, we will increase, but we will grow worse in evil, in our evil ways. Let God then, who is perfect, grow in us. This is our testimony. This is a challenge for all of us to allow Christ to grow in us in our spiritual lives. The more we accept who Christ is and we understand his will, he will seemingly be growing in us. Even though I just told you a few minutes ago that Christ cannot grow anymore because perfection doesn't go higher. But Christ grows in us, therefore the light of God begins to increase in us. Even though light itself doesn't grow. Light is constant, but it grows in us when we allow him to be radiant in our hearts. It's as if I'm blind and then I begin to see and I begin to see little by little, as if the light is beginning to grow in my vision. But light is not growing, light is constant, it's there. But for me, it's growing. Right before my eyes, I'm seeing clearer and clearer. May our Lord Jesus Christ help us receive the, the light of the world, the true light that is Christ our Savior, who came to save every soul. And we remember the likes of John the Baptist, who was a great foreigner, and who paved the way for Christ our Savior in the best way for people to draw near to salvation, to the glory of His holy name and glory be to God forever.